All right, guys, good morning. We're so glad you're able to join us. Let's start by bowing our heads and saying a word of prayer, okay? Dear Lord, we just thank you so much for this day, and we thank you whether we're here or at home that we're able to come together. We just pray, Lord, that you will bless this lesson, that the kids would get something out of it, Lord, and that um, that they would be calm and be able to really pay attention. We just thank you so much, God, for all you do for us, and we just pray that you'll keep us healthy and safe this week, and we love you so much. Amen. All right, guys, let's do our cards together. Ready? What word means God will always keep his promises? What word is it? Aslan, I know you've been watching. What word is it? <gasps> faithful. God is faithful, isn't he? What did Jesus come to save us from? How about Cole and Camry? Do you guys know? He came to save us from the punishment of sin. All right. Can we trust God only sometimes or all of the time? Grayson, what do you think? That's right. We can trust him all the time. And what word means God knows and sees everything we do? Marley, do you remember? Omniscient. He's omniscient. He knows and sees everything. All right, guys. We've got Miss Corey and Miss Hillary here today, and we are ready to get our lesson started. Okay, guys, I'm going to need your help this week for our memory verse. I know you've been working on it the last couple of weeks. So Zephan, JL, Corwin, can you guys help me read it? We're going to read it through one time together, and then we're going to break it down into each line. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Proverbs 3, 5, 6. Okay, for this first line, we are going to talk like a robot. Can you guys do that at home, Roman, Grayson? Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Okay, the next line, we're going to whisper, okay? We're going to pretend like people are sleeping. And do not lean on your own understanding. Good. Okay, for this next line, we're going to hold our nose like we're underwater, okay? Are you guys ready? In all your ways, acknowledge him. <laughs> I kind of did an underwater robot. Okay, in this last one, we're going to read it really fast. Are you ready? And he will make straight your paths. Good, guys. And that's found where? In Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Okay, we're going to run through it one more time together. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Good job, guys. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding.
Okay, do you guys remember a couple weeks ago when we talked about when Jacob left Canaan after he stole the blessing and Esau was really angry at him? Well, you can kind of say Jacob and Esau were like oil and water. They were brothers, but Jacob had stole, he deceived, he lied, he cheated, he stole the blessing and the birthright, and Esau was so angry he wanted to kill him. So let's do a little experiment, and you can do this at home sometime if you want to, but I'll show you what we're going to do. We're going to pretend like this jar of water is Jacob. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some of this water that's going to be Jacob, and let's just pour it in there. You see how that's going in there? Let's just pour it in there. See that water? Okay, so this is the oil, and we'll pretend like that's Esau. So let's just fill the jar up with oil and see if they can get along. Do you, have you guys ever done that? Do you know what happens when you put oil and water together? What happens? Can you see that? Can you see what's happening? Look at this. I'm going to bring it a little closer. So you have oil and water. They're not mixing, are they? You know, Jacob, and e I can shake this up. Look at that. Let's wait a minute and see what happens. Can you see the bottom here? They're separating. They're not staying together. Jacob and Esau, you know, couldn't get along. And Jacob left. He left for over 20 years. Look at that. Look at that water and that oil. Those brothers just couldn't get along and couldn't live together, could they? All right, guys, let's do a little review. Remember last week we learned that Jacob went to work for his uncle Laban when he got there, right? And he loved Rachel. And it came time for the wedding day and Laban played a little trick on Jacob, didn't he? What did he do? Do you remember? After he had worked for seven years to marry Rachel, did he get to marry Rachel? No, that's right. Laban tricked him and he ended up marrying Leah. And a week later, he did get to marry Rachel, but he had to stay and work another seven years to pay off that debt for marrying Rachel. How many children did Jacob have? Do you remember? That's right. I heard some of you. Twelve sons. Let's go over those again, okay? We had Reuben. Simeon, Levi, Judah, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, Asher, Issachar, Zebulun, Joseph and Benjamin. All right, guys, everybody stand up, come towards your TV, and let's sing the 12 Sons of Jacob together, okay? These are the sons of Jacob. These are the sons of Jacob. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Simeon, Levi, Judah, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, and Asher, Ezekiel, Zebulun, Joseph, and Benjamin, these are the sons of Jacob. Jacob. 
Okay, today we're going to see how some things in Jacob's life changed. It was time for him to finally take his family and move back to the land of Canaan. But Jacob was worried that Esau might still be angry with him. Remember, they were completely separated at this point. Sometimes when we're angry, we have to do something. We have to reconcile. Do you know what reconcile means? Sometimes Avery and Landon have to reconcile. It means that they have to forgive each other and become friends again after a fight or an argument. Before Jacob could bring his wives and all of his children back to the land of Canaan, he and Esau had to reconcile. They had to make up and get along again. All right, guys, so we're still talking about Jacob, right? So Jacob had lived and worked for Laban for 20 years, and God spoke to Jacob and told him to go back to Canaan. God promised to be with Jacob on his journey, and that promise is going to be really important in a minute, and we'll see why. So Jacob knew that Laban wanted him to stay and keep working, so he decided to sneak away. Can you guys all get up and act like you're going to sneak somewhere? Be really quiet and tiptoe around. When Laban found out that Jacob's family was gone, he gathered a bunch of his men and chased after him. Laban could have hurt Jacob or taken away his wives and children, but God spoke to Laban in a dream and warned him not to harm Jacob. God protected them just as he had promised. Remember that promise earlier? As Jacob and his family headed home to the land of Canaan, Jacob worried about seeing his brother Esau again. Remember, like we talked about earlier, the oil and water, they didn't mix. They weren't getting along, right? So he was wondering, is Esau still going to be mad with me? Does he want to kill me for stealing the blessing? All right. When Jacob got close to Canaan, he sent messengers to Esau to tell him he was coming. After a while, Jacob's messengers came back and said that Esau was coming to meet Jacob, and he was bringing 400 men with him. So that was kind of scary. That didn't sound good, huh? And he's wondering, is he upset with me? Is he going to try to hurt me? Why is he bringing all these men? Okay. So what did Jacob do? What should we do first whenever we're scared or worried about something? We should pray, right? Jacob prayed. Jacob was afraid, but he turned to the Lord and humbly asked God for help. The next morning, Jacob sent some of his servants ahead with animals like goats and camels and donkeys as gifts for Esau and so hopefully that he wouldn't be mad at him. Jacob hoped these would please his brother and keep him from being angry. That night, Jacob sent his family across the river to the other side. Then, while he was by himself, something strange happened. Okay, we're going to read about what this strange thing was that happened to Jacob. So, he was there, and it says, And Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. So, what strange thing was it? Dylan, do you know? What did it say? It said a man wrestled with him to the breaking of day. Who do you think that man was that he wrestled with that night? Well, it was God. Jacob wrestled with God. Have you ever wrestled, play fight, wrestling? Well, a real wrestling match is a lot harder. I mean, it takes a lot of energy. And Jacob was holding on. He wasn't going to let go of God while he wrestled with him. Okay, so now we're going to be in Genesis 32. And it said, Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. And he said to him, what is your name? And Jacob said, Jacob. And then God said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. And you have striven with God and men and have prevailed. So what happened? He wrestled with God. He wouldn't let go. And when God said, what is your name? And Jacob answered, Jacob. Well, Jacob understood what his name meant. Do you remember what his name meant? Amelia, do you remember? It meant liar, deceiver. Now, all Jacob's life, what did he do to get his way? Did he trust God to get what God said he was going to give him to be the leader of the family? Do you remember in our stories when he traded the birthright? He gave his brother a bowl of stew and Esau gave him the birthright. Or when he stole the special blessing by lying. 
and tricking his dad, Isaac? Jacob knew who he was. Well, I want to go back and look at the memory verse. Because, you know, Jacob was worried about his brother still being angry with him. And remember, he was sending him animals and servants so he wouldn't be mad at him anymore. Was, was Jacob trusting in the Lord with all his heart? Or was he trying to do things his own way again? Was he leaning on his own understanding? Remember in our memory verse, not lean on your own understanding? He was. He was trying to do it his way. And when he said his name is Jacob, he understood that he was lying and deceiving. Well, God gave him a new name, Israel. And he understood that he needed to trust the Lord with all his heart and not try and do things his way. Okay, later that morning, Jacob looked up and he saw Esau and 400 men coming towards them. He quickly took all the women, his wives and his children, and put them behind him. He was scared. He didn't know what was going to happen. Was Esau still angry? Was he going to attack them with these men? Was he even going to kill Jacob? They didn't know. When we've done something wrong, sometimes we have to be humble and show that we are extremely sorry for what we've done. That's exactly what Jacob did. He decided to show his brother Esau that he was sorry by walking towards him and bowing before him. He wanted his brother to know that he really was sorry for what he had done. What do you think Esau did? He had those 400 men. Let's look at what the Bible says. Let's read Genesis 33, verse 4. But Esau ran to meet him and embraced him and fell on his neck and kissed him. And they wept. Oh, my goodness. So they hadn't seen each other in 20 years. What happened? He embraced him. He hugged him gave him a kiss, and they cried together. Let's look at our jar again. Remember, Jacob and Esau are separated. But what we're going to do is we are going to add a little trust in God. If you're doing this at home, you can take a little dish soap and put some in. And we're going to close it up and give it another shake. Let's see what happens to Jacob and Esau once they have a little trust in God in them. Can you see the bottom of that jar? Remember how before it immediately started turning white as the oil rose to the top again? Is that happening this time? It's not, is it? It's staying completely together. It's amazing, isn't it? They had trust in God, and they had been reconciled. Um, we changed it by adding soap, and it made the water and the oil stay together. But there was a change in Jacob, too. Jacob had wrestled with God and was changed, and he had reconciled with his brother. Now, he and his wife and his children and his servants and animals could live in peace in Canaan. God had changed Jacob and given him a new name, Israel. We'll hear this name again when Jacob's descendants call themselves the Israelites. Brownie and Spot. Hi. Hi. Can you guys help me to do the review questions? Can we ask the questions, please? Sure. Question number one. What does reconcile mean? Well, remember, reconcile means to forgive each other or be friends again after a fight or an argument. My turn. Question number two. Laban wanted Jacob to stay and keep working for him. So what did Jacob and his family have to do when they left? Oh, remember, they snuck away very quietly. 
Good job, teacher. When Laban chased after Jacob and his family, who told Laban in a dream not to hurt Jacob? God! Brownie, let the teacher answer. Where were Jacob and his family going? They were going home to the land of Canaan. This question is for teacher, not spot. Who was Jacob afraid of? First of all, you two be nice to each other. And secondly, Jacob was afraid of his brother Esau. Sorry, Spot. Teacher, was Jacob afraid of Esau? Why? He didn't know. Remember, Esau was angry when he left and he didn't know if Esau would still be mad. Who did Jacob wrestle with all night? God! Brownie, let teacher answer. What was the new name God gave Jacob? It was Israel. Jacob needed to trust who? God! Brownie! Oh, sorry. What did Jacob do when he came to Esau to show that he was really sorry? He bowed before Esau. What did Esau do when he met up with Jacob? He forgave Jacob and he hugged him. What does it mean when he, we say God is faithful? When we say God is faithful, it means that he will always keep his promises. Can we trust God only sometimes or all the time? We can trust God all of the time. What word means God knows and sees everything we do? God is omniscient. All right, why don't we all say the memory verse together? You guys at home, let's all do it together, okay? Trust, Trust in, in the Lord with all your heart and, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Great job, you guys. I'm so proud of you. All right. Join us again next week. You too. Be nice. Bye.